happy morning children yes how are you fine yes fine had your breakfast yes very good so shall we move to our class yes in the last class i said you one thing right what is that about one festival what is the festival what is that yes good tree festival right so what is that one mahotsav have you anyone planted a tree if yes very good keep it up if not do it today itself just if it is available do it okay if you have any small saplings just plant it so one tree is able to give fresh air for five people yes so plant a tree today yes and then save our environment what is the lesson we are seeing children as it is there in front of you in bold letters what is that fiber to fabric yes shall we move into the class yeah so what is that content we have seen about introduction fibers wool and these are all the topic which we are going to discuss today so they are silk we have seen about life cycle of silk worm is after that silk is reared what we are going to do that with that silk the processing that we are going to discuss today and also the diseases caused due to wool and sericulture industries then we we'll, last we have a recap of the whole content yes so now are you ready for the recap and ready to answer my questions yes so first what is mean by fiber tell me fast what is mean by fiber yes fiber or nothing but they are thin strands thread like structure yes which we obtain from where plant and animal sources yes and there are artificial that is synthetic fibers are also there yes first what is that fiber yarn and then fabric we have this three right yes first there how many types of fibers are there what are the types of fibers they are natural and then synthetic natural means the fibers which we get from plant and animal sources are called natural plant we have many examples they are what cotton jute and then for animal sources wool silk shall we move to the next so how that fabric is done first fiber we get fiber from that sources as i said you earlier so and then that fiber is converted into yarn and then this yarn or combined together to make fabric or we may call it as cloths okay so these are the types of fibers right so cotton and jute are plant source and silk and wool are animal sources so we have seen about cotton yes what is the first method hand picking what is that hand picking method yes and then so what do they do with that so hand picking method in that picking what do they do after that what is that combing in that combing what do they do yes they remove the seeds from that after that jute these two you will have studied in your know, sixth standard yes sir no processing of cotton and jute you would have studied in your know, sixth standard yes sir no yes jute what is that process involved threading yes and in cotton ginning yes now we are seeing about the animal sources that is wool and silk wool and then silk yes so these are some of the examples of man made or synthetic fibers yes example of nylon polyester etc so we have seen about processing of wool the processing of cotton and jute you have earlier studied in your sixth standard now we are studying about the steps involved in processing of fibers to wool in seventh standard yes. so what are the sources of wool what are the sources of wool open your mouths yes they are camel sheep goat yak and even rabbit also okay so what is the first step yes shearing that is the removing the outer surface and then 
scouring nothing but washing and then sorting separation and then burs burs separation and then dyeing last one is spinning rolling that yarn into thread rolling that cotton into thread okay next what we have seen yesterday an important topic what is that life cycle of silkworm this we have studied in the last class right yes what does they do this male and female they combine together and the female silk moth lays eggs who lays eggs yes female so they lay hundreds of eggs at a time so after the eggs are hatched what comes out of it so the caterpillar so the caterpillar comes out of that eggs so after coming out what do they do they start eating and eating and eating yes after the eating process is over the caterpillar grows into four times bigger than yes if it was small this see this is the first stage when the caterpillar comes out after it had completed the process of eating what does it eat mulberry leaves yes so its size has been increased four times then what does this caterpillar do it secretes out the silk fibers which is rich in what the silk is rich in protein yes it is rich in protein content so it spins around itself it spins around itself and that caterpillar turns into pupa so it turns into pupa so the outer covering is called as cocoon inside that cocoon what is there that pupa changes in sorry that cocoon changes into pupa so we used to take that cocoon for preparation of silk after that what happens that pupa converts into an moth so it again grows into an adult moth and then it again lays eggs yes this is the process which is involved yes or no what is that first stage egg is the first stage second stage is larva stage third stage is pupa and then the fourth stage is the adult again it lays eggs again larva pupa and what is this cyclic process yes there is no end it keeps on going continuously if one of this is not available what happens to this the total system gets spoiled so there will be no caterpillar or no silk worms or no silk thread so this it has to keep on going continuously have you seen that cycle wheels rotating yes like the same process so it is named as life cycle of silk worm i hope up to this you are clear right yes so what is our next topic from cocoon to silk yes from cocoon to silk we know that we are getting the silk from cocoon how do we get that silk from cocoon now we are going to see about that okay for obtaining silk moths are reared for obtaining silk silk moths are reared and their cocoons are collected to get silk threads yes so the cocoons are silk moths are reared to get cocoons what is mean by rearing children what is mean by rearing rearing is nothing but it is the process of taking care of animals by providing them with food shelter and taking care of them okay so silk worms are reared for getting cocoon so cocoons are collected to get silk threads from that silk threads we are able to get what silk so see here what is this first picture represent these are all, what is these are all cocoons yes what is this called as cocoons see you are able to write see here right small filament like structure it is called as silk threads yes see so we are able to get silk silk thread from that cocoon we are able to get at which stage at that cocoon from the cocoon we are able to get the silk how do we get that so that process is we are going to study as rearing of silk worm we are able to get that from cocoon silk we are getting from cocoon okay so now we are going to see how these silk worms are 
reared how these silk worms are reared okay as i said you already who lays eggs here who lays eggs a female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time okay so the female silk moth lays eggs so these eggs are stored on strips of cloth or paper so what do they do they collect all these eggs and they sold it to the silk worm farmers that is who grow silk worms they collect all these eggs the eggs which is laid by the silk moth and then they sold it that means sell it to the silk worm farmers silk worm farmers are nothing but who grow silk worms who take care of that silk worm okay see here we are able to see a female silk moth here right see how many eggs it laid so this female silk worm what does it do it lays eggs so tell me an answer silk worm are also called as silk worm are also called as what is the one more name of the silk worm yes excellent it is caterpillars yes it is also called as caterpillars fine so the eggs are warmed to a suitable what do you mean by warm feeling warm what do you mean by the word warm yes somewhat heat not very cool giving some heat to the body have you seen that eggs hatching it used to sit on that laid eggs yes or no that hen used to sit on that laid eggs to give it suitable temperature for hatching hatching is nothing but that the young ones comes out of that eggs so the eggs are but here the caterpillars that the silk worm are not able to sit on the red right? hen is able to do that so the person who are ta who take care of the silk worm they provide these eggs with suitable temperature they provide these eggs with suitable temperature for the larva to hatch out from the eggs so this is done when this process usually done means when the mulberry trees bear a fresh crop of leaves as i said you already what is the food for the silk worm that is the caterpillars what is the food for them mulberry leaves so their favorite food is mulberry leaves so this process is done when the mulberry trees bears fresh leaves okay so see here this image represents this mulberry tree what is the tree mulberry tree and then what is this mulberry leaf mulberry tree and then mulberry leaf okay so on this leaves only that caterpillars used to keep on eat then so the larva are kept in a clean bamboo trays along with freshly chopped mulberry leaves what is the first step the silk moth lays eggs these eggs are sold to the silk worm farmers so these farmers give them provide them with suitable temperature and help in the hatching of larvae so that larvae comes out so after that what happens these larvae are kept in a clean bamboo trays yes bamboo trays along with freshly chopped mulberry leaves there these caterpillar they used to put inside this larvae they put inside that bamboo trays along with the mulberry leaves okay so these caterpillar start to eat start to eat 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 it keeps on eating for 25 to 30 days so these caterpillar keeps on non stop eating for 25 to 30 days and they grows as i said you right in that life cycle of silk worm they grow four times larger how many times they grow four times larger than the first stage so their final stage is four times larger than the first stage so after the 25 to 30 days they stop eating 